Hello dear viewers, I am Khan Bahadur, Assistant Professor of Statistics and you are watching a video from my YouTube channel Statistics by Khan. Dear viewers, I hope all of you will be doing great. Dear viewers, this YouTube channel Statistics by Khan has been created for basic statistics with a view to help the beginner students of statistics, the researchers of all fields and other learners of basic statistics. I have also a Facebook page and group with the same name Statistics by Khan. You can visit them for steps related to basic statistics. Dear viewers, for better understanding of concepts in my video, I would recommend you to watch the full video. After watching the full video, I assure you, you will understand the concepts very clearly. In today's lecture, we are computing how Mali mean from continuous group data or from continuous frequency distribution. So let's start the lecture. Harmonic mean from continuous group data or harmonic mean from continuous frequency distribution. Both of them are same thing. Okay, so for the computation of harmonic mean from continuous group data or from continuous frequency distribution, we will use the same data set that has already been used for the computation of arithmetic mean and geometric mean from continuous group data or from continuous frequency distribution. So let's write continuous group data or continuous frequency distribution. So this is continuous group data or continuous frequency distribution from which we are computing the harmonic mean. So as usual, first of all, we are writing the formula for harmonic mean from continuous frequency distribution or continuous group data. So the formula would become harmonic mean is equal to summation if divided by summation if into 1 over xi. So this is the same formula which has been used for the computation of harmonic mean from discrete group data or from discrete frequency distribution. Okay, so if we focus upon the formula, so we need summation if in the numerator. So what this summation if is, this is the total of the frequency. So if we total this column, so this will give us symbolically summation if in the numerical value which is equal to 60. So this is the value of summation if. So summation if has been found. In the denominator, we need summation if into 1 over xi. So for this purpose, first of all, we need 1 over xi. But if we look at the data set, there is no x. So before that, we need to find x. In continuous group data, x is equal to class mark or class midpoint. So we will find class mark or class midpoint of each class. So as we have already computed x in so many other examples, that is in the arithmetic mean from continuous group data or geometric mean from continuous group data. In both of the examples, we have already computed x. So by the same way, we are computing x over here again. That is, we are adding these two limits and the total of these two limits will be divided by two. So it will give us x. So if we add these two and divide their total by two, so we will get 74.5. Similarly, if we add these two limits and divide their total by 2, so we will get the class midpoint for this class and this will equal to 94.5. And similarly for the rest of the classes. For the rest of midpoints, we will use a trick that has already been discussed in the computation of arithmetic mean and geometric mean from continuous group data or continuous frequency distribution. The trick is that if the class interval is unified, that means if the interval in each class is identical throughout, so then we will add this uniform class interval with the preceding class midpoint to get the midpoint of the succeeding class. So in all of these classes, the uniform class interval is 20. So now we will add 20 with 94.5. So we will get the midpoint for this class automatically. So that will become 114.5. Again, we will add the uniform class interval with 114.5. So we will get the class midpoint for this class. That will become 134.5. And similarly, for this class, we will get 154.5 as the midpoint. For this class, we will get 174.5 as the midpoint. And for the last class, we will get 194.5 as the class midpoint. So now these are the values of x. We have found x. Now, in the formula, we need 1 over xi. So it means that now we will reciprocate each value of x. So it means we will find 1 over xi. So now these are the values of 1 over xi. 
Further, if we focus on the formula in the denominator, we have found 1 over xi. But now what do we need? We need to multiply 1 over xi with f. So now we will multiply 1 over x column with column f. We will multiply the corresponding values of f and 1 over xi. So the multiplication of f and 1 over xi will become. Now we will multiply the first value of 1 over xi with the first value of f. Similarly, the second value of 1 over xi with the second value of f and we will get the result and we will write those results over here. So this column shows the multiplication of 1 over xi and f. Now in the formula, we need the total of f into 1 over xi. So it means we will add all these values. So if we add them all, so symbolically it will give us summation f into 1 over xi, which is equal to 0 0.53044. So now plugging the values in the formula. So harmonic mean will become 60 divided by 0 0.53044. So if we simplify this further, so we will get 113.11. So after simplification, we got 113.11 as the value of the harmonic mean. It means that the harmonic mean for this data set is 113.11. So this is the final answer. So now this is the harmonic mean from continuous group data or continuous frequency distribution. So this is the procedure of the computation of harmonic mean from continuous group data or from continuous frequency distribution. Hope this will help you in understanding the steps that are to be taken for the computation of harmonic mean from continuous group data or from continuous frequency distribution. Thank you for watching the video.